He walks outside on a bright summer's day and is greeted by a familiar warm breeze. A lawnmower is buzzing in the distance. He feels something is missing and he doesn't quite know what, and yet again his nostrils detect the whiff of something strange, perhaps the faint stink of a rotting corpse. What he doesn't know is that this is the beginning of what has been heralded as the collapse of nature. The insect apocalypse is coming. You might have already read some alarming news stories of late saying things such as nature will grind to a halt and insects could vanish within a century. But before you start wondering how you might get that ticket to Mars in the future, other stories tell us that the so-called insect apocalypse is more complicated than has been outlined by some parts of the press. Nonetheless, some of the people have indeed noticed that something has changed in the environment. The New York Times writes about a Danish man who was out on his bicycle with his son on a warm summer's day when it suddenly hit him. Something ain't right here. Something very important is missing. When he was a kid riding his bike, he was forever riding into great swarms of insects, which made him close his mouth. After some time observing the outside as an adult, he realized that there were just fewer insects. That's hardly scientific, though. Some Danish dude feeling nostalgic for the days that he used to ride into black clouds of critters. But then many people of late have started talking about this loss of insects. Over in England, an entomologist aka insect scientist one day noticed the absence of moths in the morning around windows and at night around car headlights. Something was definitely wrong. All over the world, people have been saying that when they were kids, it always seemed that great masses of insects got stuck to the car windshield. Why wasn't this happening anymore? Had insects suddenly gone through a period of enlightenment and now understood the danger of automobile glass? This has got its own term called the windshield phenomenon. Again, not scientific, although one scientist said it was reasonable to assume that windshields can tell us something about the overall number of insects. Later, a British ecologist said it certainly can tell us something, uttering the sobering words, we appear to be making vast tracts of land inhospitable to most forms of life and are currently on course for ecological Armageddon. If you look at the journal called Science, you can find papers written by scientists who have tried to ascertain the number of insects in certain places. One such paper said insects were on the decline in the UK, while another said there's been a huge reduction of the biomass of insects in certain German nature reserves. Another paper said flying insects in Germany were down 80% around three decades. Some scientists say this paper should serve as a wake-up call for humanity, since dwindling numbers of insects are very bad news. Yet another scientific paper talking about insects said even more soberingly that there's been a dramatic rate of decline that might lead to the extinction of 40% of the world's insect species over the next few decades. Such a shocking pronouncement was questioned by other scientists, who pointed out that the paper had focused mainly on certain kinds of insects, notably bees, beetles, butterflies, moths, and dragonflies. Another problem is such research has focused mainly on only Europe and North America, so are people being a bit too alarmist? As you'll see today, there are many experts out there that think we should be alarmed at the rate of decline in certain insects. One thing no one would disagree with is that if insectageddon does happen, we are in big trouble. After all, love them or hate them, you can't live without them. It's a complex matter, mainly because there are millions upon millions of insect species that scientists have not studied. They might have only studied 20% of the world's insect species, including some 12,000 ant species, 400,000 beetle species, and 20,000 bee species. So when we talk about a decline in numbers, it's not always easy to get a handle on the numbers. But let's talk about bees, because dwindling bee numbers are something well documented these days. To many of you, bees might be relevant in your life only when you frantically run away from them looking like a person who's just been caught on fire. You might also enjoy that honey that comes from them, but bees are a hell of a lot more than temporary pain providers and honey-making factories. You can't throw a computer mouse around the internet for long without finding a story about the decline of bees. In 2019, US media was telling us that a 40% decline in the honeybee population was unsustainable for humans. After all, those buzzy sword bearers pollinate flowers, fruits, and vegetables, so we really need the little critters. There's something known as the colony collapse disorder, which is when a large number of worker bees in a colony disappear and leave the queen back in the hive with the nurse bees and the food. These worker bees, who are all female, are really important because they're the ones that go out and forage for the food. These are the gals you see all the time, the ones that pollinate and occasionally sting you. In terms of losing insects, scientists say a massive reduction in bees is one of the worst things that can happen. In short, they pollinate something like 70% of the world's crop species, and those crops help give sustenance to 90% of the world's humans. So, no bees means you will have a sore tum-tum, but it's much worse than that. Those plants that the bees pollinate are needed for the animals that eat them, the animals that we occasionally eat. 
As one expert pointed out, a severe shortage of bees could in the future mean a lot of empty shelves in the supermarket. The ripple effect would be felt everywhere. Many scientists disagree that a beepocalypse is on the way, and while numbers of bees have decreased a lot over the last decade or so, we don't need to worry just yet about the end of the world. As for why bee numbers have gone down, three main issues are often brought up. They are at a loss of natural habitat, human-made pesticides, and global warming. If there was a bee extinction, while there would be a global food crisis, we'd still get by since a large number of our calories come from wind-pollinated crops such as cereals. But if you enjoy berries on your oats, you might have to start thinking about another topic. No bees would mean many fruits and vegetables disappear from our pantries. There are ways to get ourselves out of this, such as something called human hand pollination, but you can be sure that this is really no replacement for bees. Then there are pollinating robots that have been designed as of late, which are really expensive to make and again no replacement for the real thing. Bees are also very expensive because they and other pollinating insects are said to have an economic value of around $150 billion. Still, when you throw around numbers like that, you might have someone telling you you're wrong. When it comes to the value of bees to humans, you get a lot of different answers, but no one would deny they are very important. For instance, when you look at 87% of crops that require animals to pollinate them, only 13% of those crops will not grow without those animals. Another 30% of those crops are highly dependent on the animals, so if we took bees out of the equation, there'd just be a lot less of some crops. For instance, it would be hard to grow coffee without them. That wouldn't only mean you'd not get your daily fix of the stuff, but it would mean millions of people would be out of work. It said something like 2.25 billion cups of coffee is drunk every day around the world, making it the second most traded commodity behind crude oil. So we wouldn't starve without bees, but the world we live in would be a very different kind of place. Maybe you could get all British and switch over to tea, since bees are not that important when it comes to pollinating tea, but flies and other insects are. That's just an example, the loss of coffee and tea would be the least of our worries if the bees went. There's more to the issue than bees, though. Studies for a long time have been saying that the number of farmland birds all across Europe had been on the decline, with the hypothesis formally being that their habitat was being destroyed by us humans. Nonetheless, there has been some concern that the bird rates are dropping because they aren't getting enough food in the form of delicious insects. In 2019, The Guardian wrote, plummeting insect numbers threaten the collapse of nature, citing a study that warned that there could be a catastrophic collapse of nature's ecosystems. The loss of bees, as well as beetles and butterflies, was said to be part of the problem. That study said insect species are declining eight times faster than birds, mammals, and reptiles. It said insects were disappearing at a rate of 2.5% in terms of entire mass every year. If this trend remains the same, all within a century the world would be a very different place. It's been said by some that all insects will be gone within a century, although anything that made them all go would also have made us go. That peer-reviewed paper said, The insect trends confirm that the sixth major extinction event is profoundly impacting life forms on our planet. Unless we change our ways of producing food, insects as a whole will go down the path of extinction in a few decades. Oh, and if you're wondering what a sixth mass extinction is, it's life on Earth for the most part going missing. Just as what happened when the dinosaurs gave up the ghost. And of course, a lot of other scientists will say talk like this is very much alarmist. But there are plenty of experts who say biological annihilation is underway, and it'll mount a frightening assault on the foundations of human civilization. Pollution, pesticides, habit destruction, climate change, overhunting, all are to blame, say these scientists. So if we don't change our ways soon, we might be walking into a future where the Earth looks pretty bare. It's not that we rely heavily on insects as our food source, but it's what they provide the world that matters. Insects pollinate plants, but they're also eaten by birds, fish, reptiles, and amphibians. If you think that this is not such a big deal, in 2019 the media features a story that said in one rainforest in Puerto Rico, 98% of insects had gone from the ground and a further 80% had gone from the trees. For some animals in the forest, that meant an empty restaurant. Even though this study featured just one forest, it was called hyper-alarming. And again, people started talking about the insect Armageddon. Most articles that popped up mentioning the massive loss of insects in parts of Germany and also Mexico and Australia has led to the decrease in numbers of other wildlife such as birds. One scientist called this horrifying, saying we are essentially destroying the very life support systems that allow us to sustain our existence on the planet. Over in England, there have been plenty of papers describing the worrying loss of butterflies, and we're talking about a loss of 58% of butterflies on the farmland that was monitored. Butterflies are not just a pretty face, they also pollinate a number of plants. Ecologists say when you see a lot of bees and butterflies around, it points to a healthy environment. They're also tasty for a number of animals. According to another paper published by the Science Journal in the USA, 450 butterfly species have been declining at a rate of 2% per year. 
Climate change is said to be the cause, with some people saying the warmer weather affects hibernation patterns, and that means butterflies are staying awake for longer and starving to death. One entomologist told National Geographic that the beautiful animals were getting old and crunchy and dying sooner. Although in England, the cause of the lack of butterflies has been blamed on not just changes in temperature, but also man-made pollutants. On top of butterfly numbers decreasing, globally there's been a decline of beetles, mayflies, dragonflies, caddisflies, stoneflies, and regular flies. We mentioned flies, insects that we imagine many of you would be glad to see the back of. These scavengers are not only annoying, but they can also spread disease. But as things stand, the world just wouldn't work without flies. Some of them are not only pollinators, but they're also a great food source for other animals. On top of that, they get into stuff and help it decompose. And while that can be disgusting, when they do that, their natural digestion process puts nutrients into the soil. Many flies help break down organic matter, and when that happens, the soil becomes healthy and plants can grow. Some flies are called the world's natural undertakers because they consume dead animals, again helping to create a healthy ecosystem. More and more flies going missing would have a worrying ripple effect. Take for instance the salmon. It eats flies, and in turns it often gets devoured by hungry bears. And maybe that bear really needed that salmon because the berries that it usually eats became scarce thanks to fewer bees being around to pollinate them. Bugs are king. They do everything, and while they can be annoying from time to time, the great work they do mostly goes unnoticed. We start only noticing this when we're out of food or out of pocket, such as those farmers in China who were recently reported as having hired human pollinators for 19 bucks an hour because most of the bees in the area had gone missing. Even dung beetles are really important. They eat all the cow poop, and without them, the cows might refuse to eat in their open toilet. It's reported that in the USA alone, dung beetles save farmers around $380 million a year. They not only make life livable for cows and recycle nutrients back into the soil, but when they burrow down, they help to aerate and mix up the soil. For various reasons, mainly because of humans, dung beetles are another insect said to be rapidly declining in various parts of the world. They're also really tasty, or at least the habits of various birds, mammals, reptiles, and amphibians would suggest so. And don't get us started on the humble earthworm. That little fella is so good for the soil and the perfect catch for certain types of early birds. In 2019, a paper was published that said the areas that were studied 42% of the Earth was in serious need of more worms. We won't say much about them though, seeing as they're not insects. You just need to know that sometimes our modern farming practices are making life difficult for them. In general, when population of insects goes on the decline in certain areas, the number of other types of insects might actually increase, but that doesn't make up for the losses. The insects we're losing that have been recorded declining, it's a big issue. As scientists have pointed out, a world without any insects, if they all suddenly vanished, would lead to an apocalyptic scenario. Our food stocks would soon be depleted, while the world around us would stink from all those rotten, uneaten carcasses lying about. And that scenario, though, is entirely science fiction. It's not going to happen, and we feel sure that those 1.4 billion insects per person will be around for a long time to come. Still, the decline of some species is real, and if this trend does not change or gets worse, the situation could turn critical. We couldn't find any scientists saying the decreasing numbers are not a matter of concern. And the ones telling everyone to calm down don't deny that this issue requires immediate and thorough investigation. But it's not all bad news. In Europe, much is already being done to address the decline of insects, including banning certain pesticides and trying harder to protect insect habitats. Not enough is happening, though, and as one scientist told the New York Times, we are still in the business of destroying the life support system of the planet. Now, you need to watch this crazy bit of science fiction. Why you wouldn't survive a town full of ants. Or have a look at what if animals went to world war with humans.